All right, we've got another question that wants the main idea. So let's just dive right in and try our best to understand what's being repeated, what seems important. Uh, the following text, okay, call the wild. Sled Buck is a sled dog living with John Thornton. Okay. Thornton alone held Buck. The rest of mankind was as nothing. Chance travelers might praise or pet him, but he was cold under it all. And from a too demonstrative man, he would get up and walk away. Okay, so walk away. He's cold. Uh, mankind was nothing. This seems very negative. Um, when Thornton's partners, Hans and Pete, arrived in the long-expected raft, Buck refused to notice them until he learned they were close to Thornton. After that, he tolerated them, even that's negative, in a passive sort of way, accepting favors from them as though he favored them by accepting. Okay, so the dog doesn't seem to like people. It's negative. Let's see what we get here. Buck has become less social since he began living with Thornton. So this is negative, for sure. Less social seems bad. But there's a very obvious problem for me here. They're making a comparison, and they're introducing the idea of time, and neither of those is really part of this story, right? So they're not comparing how he is now to how he was at some other point. Uh, they're kind of just talking about the dog just as is. This is his character. This is what he's like. There's no before or after. So that is something that the SAT does to add um, extra stuff to a wrong answer choice, hoping we don't notice it because, yeah, overall, it's got the right vibe. It's still negative. And the dog is not social. So it hits a lot of parts, but it's not making a comparison in the passage. Uh, B, Buck mistrusts humans and does his best to avoid them. Okay. Maybe. I'll keep that. I don't know. Seems a little strong, but maybe. Uh, C, Buck has been especially well-liked by most of Thornton's friends. No, that's positive. Definitely not getting that vibe. D, Buck holds Thornton in higher regard than any other person. Ooh. So there's a little bit of a comparison there. Any other person. So that's, that's a comparison too. Um, now, my problem with both B and D is that um, we're, we're kind of strong and both choices have some strong aspects, right? So B, he mistrusts humans and does his best to avoid them. Well, it doesn't seem like he mistrusts uh, Thornton, right? He mistrusts maybe other humans, so maybe this is going a little too far, right? Saying that, um, you know, all humans are bad in the dog's eyes, but there seems to be at least one that he's willing to trust. Um, and he's not really avoiding them. Let's go back. Um, da, da, da. Buck refused to notice them till he learned they were close to Thornton. After that, he tolerated them in a passive sort of way. So he's not like, he's not like, um, you know, like a puppy, like running up and like licking and jumping on you and wagging its tail. He's He's not necessarily avoiding them either. He's just kind of like not interested. Um, avoiding would be like the, the dog is running in the opposite direction, right? So that doesn't seem to be happening. He's tolerating them. He's accepting favors, but it's in this kind of like, I don't know, snobby way. I don't know if a dog can be snobby, but that's the vibe I'm getting. Now let's compare that to D. Buck holds Thornton in higher regard than any other person. I think this is easier to prove, right? He definitely has a negative view of other people. But it, can we get evidence that he he values Thornton? Um, well, uh, the first sentence maybe does that. Thornton alone held Buck. Um, the rest of mankind was nothing. So, right, so Thornton is the only one, and then everyone else is nothing. So that, that seems fine. Um, he was cold. Uh, he learned, okay, so here... Um, it says, uh, Hans, he, when Hans and Pete arrived, Buck refused to notice them until he learned that they were close to Thornton. So, um, it seems like, again, Thornton is kind of like giving the dog some sort of companionship. Um, and then, yeah, it's, it, it does put Thornton in some higher position. D is it, D is the answer. Um, it, I do understand though why some of you might pick B. It's very, very tempting but the passage has this kind of more subtle idea that Thornton is different from other humans. So this is a great example where our dumb summary was not enough. My dumb summary was that this was a negative kind of passage. The dog has like a negative view of people. So uh, that got me two answers that could work, B and D. Um, but I needed to dig a little deeper, get a little smarter to understand truly what was happening. That's okay. That is not a failure of the dumb summary strategy. That is a success, right? It got rid of two answer choices for us pretty confidently. And then we were able to focus on the difference between those two remaining choices and go hunting for it in the lines. So the dumb summary is a great starting place. Sometimes it's all we need, 
But if not, that's okay. We've at least done a good job and we can now focus on what really matters to find the right answers.